Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the briefing for the MSc Chemical Engineering. And uh, the topic for my talk today um, is going to be um, creating a sustainable future with new developments in chemical engineering. Okay, so before I begin, uh, maybe let me just, okay, uh, prepare um, and share my screen. All right, thank you very much. Okay, um, so before I begin, uh, maybe I would just like to ask um, our audiences, um, you can also type in the chat boxes, um, where are you actually from? Okay, so I have an idea of, um, you know, the, the landscape and demographics of my audience today. Don't be shy. <laughs> you know, you're going to be classmates if you enroll in our, our program, right? I have a few uh, familiar names as well. All right. Okay, so hopefully you get a bit warm up uh, as we go through uh, the presentation today. Um, okay, so as I mentioned earlier, okay, um, this is, uh, it is actually my uh, pleasure to be here with you to introduce um, firstly our department and the MSc degree program in chemical engineering. The reason why I choose uh, to present on the topic of creating a sustainable future with new developments in chemical engineering is because I think it is a very relevant subject uh, that is very close to our hearts uh, presently, as um, in particularly in the recent uh, decades, right? So, um, so before I go on to uh, talk a bit more about um, the session today, I would just like to give a, a brief background about myself. So, my name is uh, Cindy. And I'm currently a senior lecturer in the Department of uh, Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering in National University of Singapore. And I am also the co-director for the MSc program, uh, Chemical Engineering degree. So, um, so the background for myself is um, I'm actually uh, have a Bachelor of Engineering in Chemical Engineering, graduating from NUS itself. Okay, so um, some, of, some of our audiences here are also uh, NUS uh, going to be NUS graduates or NUS graduates, um, and and we always welcome um, you know alumni to come back and studies, and we also welcome uh, international students to come and join us in our department. Um, so as you can see, um, I have a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering, and I went on to also do my uh, master of science uh, in a similar uh, discipline. Uh, I, it was actually the molecular engineering um, of biological and chemical systems, uh, which is a program that is taught by NUS and MIT at that time. And um, this is actually a, a subset of the uh, chemical engineering uh, with a focus on the emerging sectors of uh, biological systems in, uh, in engineering during that time. Um, and subsequently, I completed my PhD under the same, um, the same program, um, again, uh, mainly spending my time in NUS and part of it in MIT. At that point of time, as you can see already in Singapore, we have already been developing our curriculum, our courses for the MSc uh, program and research programs in the directions um, of the emerging sectors, such as the biologics, the pharmaceutics, um, and, and most importantly, also the uh, sustainability processes. So my PhD project was actually um, about the supercritical carbon dioxide processing for food, pharmaceutical, uh, using carbon dioxide itself as a benign solvent to replace harmful solvents in many different types of processes. So I had the chance to um, work as a project leader in a research consultancy firm for a few years uh, in the Netherlands, uh, Holland, and subsequently before joining academia in uh, the Newcastle, firstly in Newcastle of University in Singapore, and then subsequently joining NUS uh, since 2019. Okay, so this is the, the background that I have. So I'm sharing this because um, I think it is also good to see, uh, you know, what having an MSc uh, degree can um, bring you further if you want to pursue uh, a career in academia uh, subsequently, or if, you know, I have also worked in research consultancy in the industry before. So this is, this is actually something um, that higher education uh, provides a lot of opportunities for us to actually pursue our interests in different areas. Okay, so um, just a just a summary of what I'm going to be sharing uh, for this session. Um, so first of all, I will be going through um, 
of course, a lot of you are from NUS and uh, some of you are from chemical engineering uh, department. Uh, but for, for some of the international audiences, I will be going through a brief introduction to the university and our department. And then um, I will share with you some of the interesting uh, development in sustainability sector that is currently uh, being de developed within our chemical engineering faculty in NUS. And, and then I will um, also highlight to you um, some of the um, aspects of the Master of Science program uh, that you are interested to uh, enroll for. And hopefully I see you um, in, the, in the classes next uh, semester or the uh, next year, right? And um, as well as uh, to show you, okay, uh, if you are not from Singapore, not from NUS, then um, we highlight to you a little bit about what uh, campus life in Singapore uh, living in Singapore is like what living in NUS is like. So, um, so just a little bit of background. Um, Singapore, um, oldest and most established uh, university is actually the National University of Singapore. So our roots actually trace back to 1905. So we have more than a, a decade of a history, a strong history of education in Singapore. So it is the first institution of higher learning. And um, as we say, um, you know, like just like fine wine, the older it is, the better. Okay, so I think um, it is it is one in which that uh, is very established. It has um, has a very long history um, in the island of Singapore, and um, it ha actually has a long line of experience in um, education. Okay, for uh, for 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 the for the area and the region. Okay. Um, in terms of ranking, of course, uh, I think most of us are well aware, uh, and we see that very frequently in the news, that Singapore has the high ranking universities and NUS has always been um, um, the, one of the first universities in the QS um, universities ranking. So uh, in 2019, 2020 and 2021, uh, we have uh, consistently been ranked first and second in the QS and the um, Times Higher Education University rankings uh, respectively. And um, of course, as a department, the chemical engineering department in NUS um, also features um, one of the top most um, chemical engineering education in Asia. So we are actually Asia's uh, number one chemical engineering um, education and um, have consistently been in the top few positions in the QS uh, World University ranking by subject, uh, usually only lagging behind top universities like MIT or Stanford universities. Um, we actually have a very uh, strong um, group of university uh, faculty members who have who are actively involved and um, doing a lot of very good teaching and and this is highlighted by the university teaching awards that many of our faculty members have already won won so far. And um, out of our 46 faculty members, actually 13 of them have uh, been winning the University Teaching Awards, which is one of the highest accolades of um, uh, the achievements in teaching in the university. So our faculty, our department actually has a very high proportion of um, academic staff who have won this university's uh, teaching awards. Um, and also we have um, uh, our department staff who are in uh, editorial boards or being the main or chief editors in several scientific journals um, in, in the international journals. Um, as for the um, Science and Technology uh, Awards by uh, the President's Science and Technologies Awards, uh, so far since 1987, we already have uh, six uh, of these awards uh, within the department. And um, also we have also received 10 international awards in the science and technology uh, sector. And many of our faculty members are active in research and, um, and 30 of them um, have in NUS um, are globally highly cited researchers. So out of the 30, actually six uh, of these researchers are in the chemical engineering department. Being a small department, um, having six of our faculty members uh, being in this um, 
global highly cited researchers, uh, you can actually see how, how uh, the quality of our research uh, is within the department. So this is just an, some introduction about uh, the people that you're going to work with or you're going to study with when you join um, our department. Okay, so um, some of the questions that I would like to ask you today would be, first of all, what are some of the world problems that you would like to solve? Okay, so um, coming here, joining us uh, in the postgraduate fair, uh, it's obvious that you have a passion to improve yourself. You have a passion to actually have um, uh, make a difference in your career development, uh, make a difference in the industry that you work with. So maybe in the chat box, can you tell me, okay, uh, what are some of the world problems that you would like to solve? anything, poverty, food, energy, anything, okay? Okay, so currently I, I, I see two inputs, to, okay? Um, there are people who say climate change and water sanitation, okay? All right, these are very good examples of some of the problems that the world is facing globally, all right? And it is very interesting um, to see how um, some of the solutions, okay, to these problems, okay, so what are some of the solutions to this problem? So some of the solutions to these problems are actually embedded in the chemical engineering curriculum itself. Okay, so we shall take a look and see um, this um, UN sustainability goals that is published um, for everybody to, to see, right? So uh, one of, so, so as you can see from the 17, um, um, 17 global sustainable, sustainable development goals, right? Um, you can easily highlight eight to nine of them that can be solved using chemical engineering um, um, principles. Okay, so this includes things like the clean water and sanitation, uh, developing affordable and clean energy, okay, uh, developing uh, good uh, work and economic growth in the, in the, in the industrial sectors, uh, innovation in the industry, infrastructures, uh, developing sustainable cities, um, you know, having um, responsible consumption and production, responsible um, manufacture of uh, new and cleaner products, right? The climate change, life um, below water, okay? And, um, and of course, um, some of the more subtle things like um, collaborations between institutions, education, etc. All right? So this, so as we can see, cosmetic, okay, so I also have seen one uh, input here on the chat box says cosmetic products, right? Okay, so that, that is also a very uh, uh, interesting sector that in chemical engineering we also work with, right? So, so all of these uh, sustainable goals are very important uh, for us to try to work towards solving uh, many of the world's problems today, okay? So, um, so as you can see from this slide, um, in NUS, uh, the chem especially the chemical engineering department, we have um, already started uh, very, very long ago um, to be involved in a lot of the major uh, research initiatives and the leadership um, in the research programs that targets these sustainability issues. So this includes uh, the uh, work that we do in the um, Cambridge Center for the carbon reduction in chemical technology. Okay, we we um we know okay in some way or other either by our education or or we read in the news or even through our you know communications with friends that carbon uh, dioxide in the air in the in the environment is one of the major problems that we are facing uh, that leads also to climate change, right? So we have um, actually a lot of uh, resources and research in the area of uh, carbon reduction um, in chemical processes, okay, in technology, in processes, in plants that emits the most carbon dioxide, all right? Um, we also are very uh, much involved in the NUS flagship green energy program, whereby we uh, look at renewable sources of energy. We are um, involved in decarbonization, 
um, and also the pharmaceutical innovation um, program in Singapore, the PIPS, the nano hash program for the production of uh, nano uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, pharmaceutics party, um, products, as well as the Pfizer and US uh, corporate lab. So these are some of the um, issues that we are currently uh, involved in solving within our department. So um, we are also very much involved in um, the membrane research, energy research, um, etc. As you can see from this um, slide here that highlights some of the major research initiatives and the leadership that uh, positions that we play in this um, in this research initiatives in that is actually a uh, major in Singapore as well as in NUS. Okay. So um, just to highlight a few um, examples of the more recent uh, development and by um, actually our own faculty members as well. So we have uh, here um, in the news um, that we can see that um, Prof Pravin Linger here and his team has actually demonstrated the first uh, experimental evidence for the stability of uh, carbon dioxide hydrates. Uh, in oceans uh, sediments. So this is actually a breakthrough in the in this uh, carbon capture uh, techniques whereby you can actually um, store carbon dioxide as uh, CO2 hydrates um, in oceanic uh, sediments. Okay. So we are also um, heavily involved, of course, uh, in um, trying to reduce waste as well as to produce cleaner energy, right? So uh, one of our professors, uh, Associate Professor Tong Yan Hua, over here you can see, um, he leads the NUS team uh, in the development and research of the anaerobic digestion. And um, it started, of course, off, it started off in the laboratory. And then um, subsequently, we have our own small pilot scale equipment within NUS uh, in one of the hostels. And, and subsequently, um, this um, process is actually being scaled up uh, into an actual production scale. Uh, and it is being implemented in uh, one of the uh, large uh, food village in Singapore, which is the East Coast Lagoon uh, food village. Okay, so, so again, this is an illustration of um, how our research and the researchers in NUS uh, can help to, um, you know, educate us in, in, in ways that we can actually help to build a more sustainable future. All right, um, and and of course, I'm if if you if you follow the news as well, um, you will know that we are in NUS. We are actually very famous for our membrane uh, technology because um, in Singapore, membrane technology is very important, and and we know why because we have a scarcity of water, and uh, the new water that uh, we are currently having uh, as part of our natural taps is is actually. Um, is actually being um, produced by membrane technology, using membrane technology being sani um, sani clean and sanitized and filtered using membrane technology. So um, previously, we you, uh, you might have heard of uh, Professor Neil Chong, who has done a lot of uh, great uh, and innovative work in uh, the membrane technology. And uh, we also have uh, one of our remarkable uh, female academics, uh, Dr. Zhang Sui here, who is also doing um, the membrane technology. And uh, one of, in one of the recent news, we can see how she actually uses uh, membranes to help to make uh, the drug manufacture process more sustainable through uh, the efficient removal of harmful solvents. So um, as if, if you have uh, some background in chemical engineering or chemistry, then you will know that uh, the manufacture of drug molecules through, very, through a series of processes actually um, utilizes a lot of harmful solvents, you know, ethanol, uh, those hydrocarbon um, types of solvents. So in, in this case, we actually have um, our uh, using the membrane, we can actually have better solvent recovery and we can reduce the use of the harmful solvents um, in any of these processes. So to make it more efficient and cleaner as well as greener. And um, of course, lastly, um, 
uh, not to forget um, our contributions in the uh, materials for semiconductor industry, the materials for solar cells. So one of the uh, breakthrough that we have in the recent years is the highest efficiency solar cells um, with a power conversion of 23.6% um, using uh, perovskite and organic materials, uh, which is developed by Professor uh, Assistant Professor Ho Yi um, and his team in NUS, um, which is a, a breakthrough for the clean energy and solar energy sector. So solar energy, of course, you, you, you understand that in Singapore, uh, sunlight is abundant. We are a sunny island. And um, however, the land is very expensive. So in order for solar uh, energy to take flight, we need to have solar energies that has a high efficiency. Otherwise, the, um, the economics of the entire process doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't balance out very well. All right. So, so having said that, um, these are just some of the highlights of the research uh, that um, some of our academics, uh, our faculty members have been involved in. Um, of course, it's not possible to highlight everybody's uh, research because um, in, in our faculty, we have, as, as we mentioned, we have uh, more than 40 uh, faculty members and each and every of them actually, um, but every one of us um, have a passion in doing research in a more sustainable and energy and efficient um, way, manner that benefits the industry. All right. So, um, Next, I would like to maybe highlight a bit more about the NUS uh, Chemical Engineering um, Program, which is um, the which is what I think you have uh, come in to take a look at uh, what we can offer you. Of course, the MSc in Chemical Engineering Program um, is to help students um, to equip themselves with um, advanced scientific and technological knowledge. So we want to build on your bachelor's um, degrees of knowledge uh, and the skills that you have and to uh, elevate that uh, knowledge into something that you can use uh, in very specific topics and areas, okay, such that it can be beneficial for your development uh, in your career or your research. Um, we want to develop engineers who are adaptable and flexible and who can be technically uh, proficient to tackle um, increasingly interdisciplinary uh, problems and to work together with other people in a global work environment. Okay, so previously you have heard um, our vice, uh, our, 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 our fact, uh, dean, uh, vice dean, also talk about the interdisciplinary, um, the importance of interdisciplinary work, right? That That is actually, um, something very important because um, if, if you think about um, the, the current um, problems, right, it is no longer a problem that maybe only chemical engineers can solve or maybe only the mechanical or the electrical or the chemical or the chemistry people who can solve, but it requires a group of people from different disciplines working together Okay, to be able to come up with a good solution for, for the problem. Uh, one, one example I can give you here is, uh, you know, the trace together token that uh, Singapore uses um, during the pandemic, right? Of course, um, it, it, you know, it, it's just a very small piece of device, but the science behind this thing, right, requires people with knowledge in epidemiology, in social sciences. Uh, you need somebody with, who can do the software, um, or maybe the recognition of, um, devices, uh, you need people to do the hardware, the battery, the casing, everything, um, you know, everything that is required to, to actually manufacturing that trace together token, right, requires a very dynamic team of people working together. And that is how you can actually come up with a solution, okay, that can, uh, that works for, um, you know, and benefits most people, right. And we want want to foster diversity um, that can lead to more professional options uh, for, the, for our students. Okay, so um, our NUS uh, chemical engineering graduates um, typically will have a firm grounding in broad fundamentals that as, as you, you would have, um, as well as a familiarity um, with uh, several specialized areas. So, um, 
So what are some of the uh, career prospects it, for our chemical engineering graduates, um, both uh, undergraduates or um, postgraduate students? Um, of, typically, it is, uh, of course, the oil and gas industry uh, as, um, as traditional um, industries that we typically go to. Um, we are currently also uh, evolving and going into the energy, public and public sectors, clean energy sectors as well. So uh, we have uh, students who um, work for places like Capo, uh, National Environmental Agency, for instance. Um, a lot of uh, students who are interested in research, uh, they can join the, um, like the research institutions like ASTAR. Um, students who are interested uh, to join fine chemicals and pharmaceuticals industry. Uh, we have like PNG, MSD. And um, of course, we also have the food and uh, cosmos, cos uh, cosmetics industry, uh, whereby, you know, when you have to do any manufacturing or formulations, um, those are also relevant to our chemical engineering department. Um, process and manufacturing, uh, uh, places like Agilent, 3M, uh, HP. And of course, the semiconductor and electronics, uh, in uh, semiconductor industry like Micron, um, also maybe like the, the solar energy sectors like the REC, for instance, All right? And um, this is just a snapshot from uh, one of the websites uh, highlighting distributions of salaries for chemical engineers uh, in Singapore. So, um, so you can take a look at uh, this snapshot and, and you can see that in the, the mean, um, the monthly salary, it, of course, be around 8,000 plus, right? Okay, for this uh, group of people uh, where we have the chemical engineering uh, degree, all right? Of course, this is not uh, uh, the, this is not the, the picture for maybe like fresh, fresh bachelor's uh, uh, graduate, okay? It's probably some uh, engineer maybe with uh, a few years of working experience and, um, and also maybe somebody with a higher education in um, chemical engineering, all right? So just to highlight some of the modules that uh, we mentioned earlier that will help you in um, certain specialized areas of your interest. Uh, so these are some of the uh, chemical engineering modules that we uh, offer uh, in our program. And uh, this is a non exhaustive leave. So we, we have not listed out all the, all the different modules, but uh, I just want to highlight a few uh, interesting and new uh, and uh, new modules here um, for your understanding of how we are uh, constantly evolving our um, and developing our, our program, okay, to capture the relevant skills and knowledge to be given to, every, um, to our students. So we have um, the optimization of processes. Um, we also have topics uh, in catalysis, polymeric materials, and membrane, okay, as you, as you can see how useful these materials are in um, our previous um, um, mention about the, um, how, how we can use membrane in different sustainable technologies. Okay, so some of the new, uh, there are also some new um, modules that, that were recently uh, developed, such as electronic materials and energy technologies. Okay, looking at how we uh, electronic materials are used to help to capture and store energy. Uh, we also have a module about the carbon capture, sequestration and utilization, how we can solve the problem of carbon in the environment. Um, you also have um, like bioinformatics for engineers, okay, looking at uh, the use of computational skills as well as uh, molecular biology, how, we, how these two come together to help, uh, to help engineers, uh, chemical engineers, pharmaceutical engineers to design uh, drugs to understand the, how drugs or molecules actually works. Right, um, and then there are two new modules coming out, which is uh, one is the circular economy in the chemical industry and uh, green chemical process and technology. Uh, so, so these are all the relevant modules uh, in the in the area of sustainability. Okay, so um, coming to the application um, process. Okay, so if you're interested to come and join us uh, in the chemical engineering program, then um, you can.
can see application details uh, and the program details in our website over here. So the, um, the cde.nus.edu.sg, okay, um, and then you can find the MSc in chemical engineering. All right, if you require this link, um, you can let me let us know uh, in the chat box and then uh, we, can, we can paste the, the link in the chat box later. Okay, um, the application, uh, the application link is um, over here. Um, I'm sure all of you are also very resourceful, so it, it, it definitely is not difficult uh, to actually find the link to the website. But then again, if uh, you, you would like to have the links, uh, we can uh, always paste it in the chat box um, for your easy reference. Right, so we have the application. Um, you have to go to the application for the graduate coursework programs, and um, then it will tell you how to uh, get into the portal to to do the the application. All right. So um, the application period uh, for our upcoming intakes. So we um, will be taking in um, the applications for the January. So we have two uh, two intakes. Per, per year. So there are, because there are two semesters for every academic year. So our next intake would be in January 2023. And um, subsequently, the next one would be August 2023. So for the January 2023 intake, the application will start in late July uh, next month, and um, it will close in late August. Um, 2022. So you have about one and a half months of window to submit your application um, for the January 2023 intake. If you are aiming for the August 2023 intake, then the application window will start early uh, in uh, January next year and uh, closes in March uh, next year, 2023. So, so these are the two um, normal application periods that we have for this uh, for this program. So please to do take note of uh, the application periods if you are planning to um, apply, especially for the January uh, intake. So um, these are our program directors for the chemical engineering uh, program. Uh, Prof. Yan Ning, he is our uh, chemical engineering MSc program director. Um, Dr. Wu Zhe and myself, uh, we are the co-directors for this program. So you can um, email any of us, okay, if you have an inquiry about the program, okay, after following this, uh, this session today, all right? So the last uh, item here, uh, I would just like to quickly go through uh, a few slides here about the living and study in Singapore as well as in NUS. So those of you uh, um, who are current students with us, of course, you would know uh, where this picture comes from. It's from the university town uh, in, in, uh, in our Cambridge campus. And um, well, this is a very interesting place because there are research, uh, the cutting edge research labs there. Um, there are uh, student accommodations, and most importantly, there are many, many vibrant and um, nice restaurants and food court uh, in this place, which is a really nice uh, area for students to uh, stay and to to live um, during their time in NUS. Right. Um, just uh, uh, give you an idea of um, you know the environment in the campus. So um, on the left you can um, and on the right actually you can see our um, like LTs. Um, you know when they are empty as well as when you know uh, in the pre-pandemic period you can see that uh, we have like the filled with people, few hundred people uh, in the sessions, in some of the large uh, class sessions, or maybe in seminars, webinars, um, events. Okay, so this is uh, all very exciting, and we do hope that we can get back to this, um, to, to, to this, um, the scenarios uh, very soon. All right. Um, we also have um, our most of our MSc classes. Um, if the if the enrollment size is small, then we will um, be doing our class in small classes and uh, more intimate settings, um, such as the tutorial classrooms and and even some of the um, uh, um, active learning classrooms that you can see here, where students can sit together in groups and discuss uh, during the sessions. Um, if you take up one of the, like the research projects with one of the professors um, as part of your uh, modules, 
uh, with us, then uh, you have the opportunity to work in some of the laboratories. Uh, in some of the modules, you will also have the opportunity to use our cutting uh, edge technology uh, virtual reality tool to help you uh, to help you have an experience of the real life industrial experience. Um, okay, so I, I will not go into detail um, of the uh, of this map here, but it's, it's to typically to show you that Singapore not it's not just safe, okay, as what our deans have actually mentioned earlier. It's not just safe, but it's actually very uh, easily uh, accessible, um, e uh, easy to travel anywhere within the country. Um, and finally, of course, um, not you, you cannot mention Singapore without mentioning the good food, okay, that you are going, that you can actually try over here. So uh, just to highlight a few, okay, we have a fusion of different nationalities. So um, of course, our, our food is very diverse and, um, and dynamic. All right. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, and I would like to highlight uh, that if you have um, any questions, uh, you may put down down in the chat box. Okay. And, and also, if you um, have a WeChat uh, account, you can subscribe to our uh, department's WeChat channel, okay, whereby we can see more updates about our degree programs, our department developments, etc. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. You can uh, unmute to ask questions or you can put that in the chat box, right? Okay. Any questions that you'd like to ask? Do you have any information about the 3 plus 1 plus 1 framework? Um, okay. So um, this is a question from one of the students. Uh, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with the 3 plus 1 plus 1 framework, um, it is actually a, a uh, a collaboration um, with some of the universities um, to, to allow students uh, to come to Singapore uh, in the final year of the undergraduate as well as to, uh, and then after that, they will take a one-year master's program with us. So um, to answer this question, I think um, the this framework is only uh, agreement with certain universities. So you can actually um, check with your current university to see if there's any agreement uh, with, uh, with, our, with our department. And um, you can find more information on this in our um, WeChat channel. So, so this, is, this uh, is mainly for the direct admission. This, this session is mainly for our direct admissions channel, but um, yeah, you can find more information about 3 plus 1 plus 1 in our WeChat channel. Um, can I update my IELTS score after submitting the application? Um, okay, so um, I have here uh, with me actually uh, Miss Sharon, I think. Oh, okay, let me see if Sharon is around. Yeah, right, I'm um, around. Yes. Okay, so I what I understand is that you can update, but it must be before the closing of the application. Correct, Sharon? The, because the student was asking, can I update the IELTS score after submitting the application? Uh, there is a deadline to submit. Mm. So if oh, okay. you cannot submit on time before the application close, and if we uh, intend to offer you admission, then we will actually send you an email to ask you mm. to submit by a certain deadline. So you have to submit within that deadline to in order to gain admission to the intake. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm. Is there any other questions from anybody else? Okay. Um, yep. So thank you all very much uh, for your attention, okay, to the presentation today. And I wish you all the best and I hope to see you uh, in class, uh, you know, uh, that, that you will uh, subsequently decide to join us and hope to see you in, in our MSc program, MSc classes. I have one question over here. Um, can I submit the scores of the first four semester and wait for the fifth semester to be updated? Um, if you are in a four-year program, you would need at least the six semester um, results. So if you are currently only um, so if you if you are going to graduate uh, next year, then um, for the 2023 intake, then um, yeah. So by the time you you try to uh, 
enroll for the 2023 uh, intake, right? You should have at least your six semesters result. Okay. What is the main difference between an MSc and an MEng in chemical engineering? Um, okay, so currently, as you can see, uh, the MSc that we are um, that we are talking about over here is mainly a coursework based uh, MSc program. So the MEng um, is uh, a little bit more research intensive, and uh, we also have our MEng uh, talk. I think tomorrow. Okay, in one of the sessions. So if you are interested more on um, the, the postgraduate in research, then uh, you can actually take a look and see what is the offer in the MNG program. Does that answer your question? So it's, uh, MNG is more heavily, um, more heavy in research, whereas the MSc uh, is uh, more coursework based. But within the MSc itself, there is also some opportunities for you to do a research project, but you will not be as, as intense as the um, MNG program. If your IELTS score have met the admission requirements, yes, uh, you, 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 you can submit the higher scores, but there is no, there is no need to submit the higher scores. So if you can check whether your IELTS scores have uh, met our admission requirements when you submit. And if that, is, uh, if that has been fulfills our requirements, then you, you do not, there is no need to submit the, the higher scores. Is there any other questions you'd like to ask? Okay, maybe I will just um, put the screen here, the one with the email addresses so that if you have any other questions, okay, you can feel free to let me just copy my email address. Okay, so if you feel shy to ask and then you want to ask some more questions, you can feel free to email to me after the session. Okay, any questions uh, you have regarding our MSc program, um, okay, regarding maybe some of the research that uh, I have um, highlighted earlier. Thank you, everybody. I will just stay on this screen until the room close. Okay, if you have not um, scanned our WeChat channel, you may do so now, All right? So that you can um, find out what are some of the latest developments and updates and announcements.